Hi guys, how are you? My name is One Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Patreon.com slash BKC. All right, BKC. All right, number one, um, we have record, not record, depression level unemployment. Okay, and what happens when you have high unemployment? Wages come down, right? So this $37 right here is going to start to decrease. Now, this is manufacturing with benefits, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't matter. It's the same thing with everything else. Uh, you know, this bullshit, uh, we're going to have a trade war and we're going to bring jobs back to America. Yeah, that sounds great <laughs> if you're illiterate when it comes to uh, how macroeconomics works. Nobody's going to go out, all right, uh, and uh, and say, well, I'm going to bring jobs back to America, and I'm going to pay thirty-seven dollars or whatever the new the new wage is going to be, all right? That's not going to happen. <laughs> That's not even going to happen at ten dollars, <laughs> okay? Um, so we are in big doo doo right now with such high unemployment. Uh, GDP now has dropped all the way back to 2014 in real terms, real GDP. Okay, it's 17.2 uh, trillion of GDP, and I think uh, it's 19 uh, nominal GDP, something like that. G I forgot what it is exactly. Doesn't matter. <coughs> so we we are all the way back to 2014-15. GDP. So you see these isolators, you know, uh, PMI just uh, snapped back up and unemployment, yeah, V-shaped recovery and blah, 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 blah. yeah, bullshit. That's pent up demand uh, that when you go from a lockdown, you're going to see a very sharp drop. And then when you come out of it, you're going to see that that bounce. OK, but remember where we're bouncing from 2014-15. We're not bouncing from uh, January 2020. So you got to keep that in mind. It's very, very important. Now, let's get back to this wage thing again. Remember, 70% of GDP in the United States is consumption. Okay? This is consumption. This is everything. This is the, uh, the four parts of, it's actually five, but whatever, four parts of GDP. Personal consumption, 68%. Right. When unemployment is high and, and wages are suppressed, this is coming down, okay? What's going to happen to consumption? Consumption is going to drop. What's going to happen to credit? That's going to drop, okay? Less people have jobs. Um, what happens to debt to income, right? Debt to income, debt is going to rise and income is going to drop, okay? That makes the debt more expensive. Even though interest rates are low, it's going to make it more expensive. So if there's less wages, less consumption, what's going to happen to revenue? Revenue is going to start to suffer. What is going to happen to profits? Profits are going to start to, to suffer, okay? It's a deflationary spiral. So when wages fall, consumption is going to fall, credit is going to fall, and then you're going to have revenue and profits fall. What's going to happen to GDP? It's going to start to contract, right? It starts to get smaller. Now, think about this on the world stage. Here's the world, right? So here's China. This is Asia, actually, right? Here's Asia, Europe. US in here, okay? And then you have other countries and you have South America, Middle East, okay? Now, when the US starts to contract, right? What's going to happen to the rest of the world? The rest of the world is also going to start to contract, okay? Now, how the these nations over here deal with it is going to be key, okay? Now, they are in terms of COVID, they're doing a lot better than we are. OK, and um, they they have some kind of a, of advantage over us at, the, at this point. 
The next thing I want you to think about is since we are a consumer-driven economy, China, Europe, Japan, the rest of the world, they can live on very low income relative to the U.S. Okay, They're used to it. Uh, a Greek can live off, uh, difficult, but they can live off four or 500 euros a month. Okay, they, They're used to that. Americans, if they're not going to the mall every single day, they can't, uh, you know, they're going to start suffering. And if they're not suffering, and if they, uh, meaning that the economy will start to suffer, because right? we consume a lot. So think about that. The next problem that we have is who is really the importer in this big economy, world economy? The U.S. That's who. Can't even draw. Right, China, they're not. I mean, Asia, they're they're not um, importers, right? They're exporters. Japan, China. Uh, you look at Germany, right? They're not exporters. The EU in general is a net importer. I'm sorry, net exporter. Uh, you look at the Middle East, net exporter. Okay. So you end up in this situation where everybody's exporting and nobody's importing, <laughs> right? And that's why the U.S. has enjoyed this for so many years because, hey, as long as we import, then the rest of the world has jobs and everything looks great and whatever. But again, it all comes down to this, right? It comes down to this. And, you know, we have a lot of debt, a lot of debt that this has to support, okay? Okay. It's got to support a lot of consumption in order to keep the economy going. Uh, back to uh, 2020. Oops, there we go. 2020 levels. So we're nowhere near that. Um, uh, it's not going to change anytime soon. So we're supplementing now this consumption by printing all this money, $4 trillion in four months, $5 trillion in loans um, from the uh, Fed and so forth and whatever. <sighs> You know, how long can we keep that up? Right? You have to start thinking about that. How long can we keep it up? Let's look at Germany, France, and Britain. Okay, Let, let's see what their debt to GDP. Because our debt to GDP right now is 130, 140. Okay, in real terms, debt to GDP is 160 almost. It's a lot. Okay, so let's look at Germany. Germany is at 59.8. Okay, France 98. France's deficits are 0.7%. Um, you look at the United Kingdom, right? And they are at 80, okay? Their deficit's a little bit more. It's 3.8. Uh, I'm sure it's going to increase in, in all of them. But look where they're starting from and where we are, right? It's a very, very big difference. So, again, we come back to this, um, you know, the wages. It's all about the wages. It's all about consumption and how it affects the whole, you know, entire globe. Uh, let me show you what... Um, Venezuela looked like from 2002 all the way to almost 2018 and what you'll see is you know they had uh, you know kind of going up and down or whatever and then that nice little pop and then everything fell to shit right and they went um, year over year GDP uh, went down to minus 20 we are at minus 9.5 year over year right so we did one of these jobs just like Venezuela. And what did Venezuela do? Right? They increased their money supply. What did the US do? Increase their money supply, right? Let's take a look at the market uh, the Wilshire 5000, okay? And to GDP. And what do you see? Right? What do you see? Vertical, straight up. That's exactly what the deficits are doing and all those lending facilities, right? So it's completely detached from the real economy. So the only thing the market gives a shit about is how much money are you going to give me? Can these companies make their next monthly, forget about two months, monthly payment loans? Do they have enough money? Yes. Okay. Buy the stock market. That's what it's come down to, right? Nobody gives a shit about the fundamentals. There's you know, all that stuff. Nobody cares. Because no matter what happens, there's going to be more deficits, there's going to be more QE, there's going to be uh, more repos, whatever is necessary. And they tell you every single day, the Fed will do whatever is necessary. 
You want to see what junk bonds are doing, right? Historical lows of 4.95. Look where they are. Okay. How did that happen? Well, QE. QE, baby. The Fed is buying junk bonds. They're backstopping the risk for uh, those investors. Initially, they started selling it, went up to 12, and then they came in and started buying it right back down to historical lows. Let's take a look at stock buybacks this past 10 years, right? And this goes up to 2019. It went as high as $13.5 trillion. And, of course, stock buybacks continued in, in, you know, uh, until, until the COVID started. So you give me money. Uh, when I'm making money, I'll buy back my stock. I won't prepare for a rainy day. And then when the shit hits the fan, well, you can just give me more money, right? That seems fair. It's like going to the casino. I bet we're black. Red comes out. Oh, don't worry about it. Here. You're not going to lose your money. Take your money back, and we'll give you some extra ones. And uh, bet again. Red. Black comes out. Shit. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Here. Take your money back. Here's some extra. And that's what I've been saying on this channel uh, and everywhere, that we have a savings bubble. Okay? We have a, a, a very big savings bubble. So let's go back to uh, when things were good to see what Stephanie Kelton and MMT were saying. Deficit's up, growth is up, inflation is subdued, rates go where Fed says, which is bullshit, okay? And um, because the, the first the bond market started uh, dropping yields and then the Fed started to chase, and that's always happened, okay? It's not the Fed lowers them and then the... Anyway, forget it, that's bullshit. Revisionists are working overtime. Will they say anything except MMT was right? Hmm, huh? Would they? Huh? Hmm, MMT was right? See, everybody's an expert when the market is going straight up and the economy is doing great. They can write all kind of stupid shit. So let's come to today where we printed $4 trillion, $5 trillion in lending facilities and QEs from the Fed. And what's the economy done? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, unemployment is still at record levels, uh, not record, but depression levels. Okay, didn't do anything. And don't give me this bullshit, well, they were locked down. What do you mean they're locked down? You don't even know what a lockdown is. Right? You, you go to Asia, you see what a lockdown is. You go to Greece, you'll see what a lockdown is. It's garbage. So that's what MMT is good at. MMT is good at selling you uh, that, oh, yeah, you're going to, um, uh, it's our savings, right? Government debt equals our savings, right? So we're going to do what? We're going to consume and we are going to save at the same time. You cannot consume and save at the same time. Somebody, you know, has to be a net saver and someone has to be a net disaver. That's the way it works. Okay? So you're either going to consume or you're going to save. You, meaning the 95%. Okay? Somebody's going to net save that spend. So who's going to net save it? Well, the top 5%. Okay? Nobody that got these stimulus checks and unemployment is running out to go buy bonds. Okay? You're going to spend that money. You're going to try to keep yourself afloat. So that means that money is going to end up with the top 5%. Okay? And then what are they going to do with it? Create jobs in this environment? No. They're going to take that money. They're going to run off uh, into the stock market. They're not going to put those profit savings underneath their uh, underneath their mattress. And then with those savings, they're going to bid up the stock market. And that's exactly what has happened. Because no matter how bad things get, no matter what the fuck happens, the government is going to bail you out. You have no risk. And I'm talking about net. Net. Okay. Of course, there's going to be companies, you know, how many companies have gone bankrupt and Small businesses are getting destroyed and all that stuff. Yes, I understand that. But I'm talking about net. Somebody's always going to win, right? So those those net savings are always going to go in the stock market. So you are in an environment where the economy is falling, the money supply is falling, the stock market is going up. Okay? That's fucked. That's <laughs> That's fucked. And for all those experts like Colin Roach, oh, I'm a monetary expert. Oh, what do you mean the Fed? <laughs> oh, 
Well, what? What? America strong, you know. With, with uh, Logan Mochta Champi. Oh, everything is great. <laughs> I'm a forward-looking indicator. Really? Okay, my friend. Let's take out the four million, the four trillion in deficits. Let's take out the five trillion from lending facilities, and then tell me is the market a forward-looking indicator? Is it? No. So don't give me this bullshit. Oh, liquidity. Oh, I don't understand. Oh, I'm going to shoot anybody that talks about the Fed again. <laughs> okay. Those guys are clowns. They never saw COVID-19 coming. They never understood the socioeconomic impact. And now that the market is going up, they're experts. They're going to tell you about everything. And it's, it's not the Fed. It's just their magical insights that they know that everything is fine and everything is great. And we're going to have a V-shaped recovery and everything is fine. And now they went from a V-shaped recovery to, you know what the new word is? Now we're going to have a W. <laughs> anyway, so again, you see that MMT is garbage, right? Uh, they'd like to take credit when things were all great. And now when things are shitty, that we were supposed to have all this economic growth, thanks to the, the, the deficits, it didn't work out. The only thing that worked out is higher asset prices. So keep that in mind. Don't go out and start saying, oh, Nick is saying it's going to be hyperinflation and we're finished. And that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you we're headed in the wrong direction, running top speed in the dark towards a cliff. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right, guys. That's it. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Bye-bye.